I want to talk to you about a very humble hybrid, but with a very noble name. This is Dendrobium nobili, and I will continue to refer to her as a no ID, even though I think I may have the ID. I'm not 100% sure. Things differ with the nobili complex hybrids because of how many times they've been crossbred. Thank you so much for joining me. The purpose of this video is to give hope, remove frustration, and take away any doubt you may have that you're doing something wrong with your Dendrobium nobili. I am referring to the nobili hybrids that we can get in our big box stores, garden centers, DIY stores, similar to where we buy our complex Phalaenopsis hybrids. The market for orchids that are blooming out of season has always been a very big factor in selling these orchids, and very often they pop up en masse in these points of sale when it is winter, it is gloomy, when we need a pop of color. So whether you are an avid orchid grower or not, these blooms, they draw you in because of their abundance and often because of their gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. The mass-produced Dendrobium nobili hybrids that we see and that usually come without an identity are treated exactly the same as the complex Phalaenopsis hybrids that we see in the same stores. They are pumped full of hormones and I'm telling you this, again, this video is here to take away any doubt that you may have about your nobili hybrid and give you the encouragement that it's going to be fine as long as you stick with your nobili hybrid and have patience, the big word for every single orchid that we grow, patience. So let's go back to the point of origin where you've bought your nobly hybrid and maybe now you are in some form of despair that you're getting it wrong. When you see your Dendrobium nobly hybrid for the first time at a garden center or anywhere, let's just say for the first time, you will see little bit of bulbs in the back. You may even see what looks like a chunky bulb that has been cut off. And then you see this one gorgeous cane that is the one factor that actually draws you in and catches your interest in full, beautiful bloom. That is what catches your eye. And that is what that one beautiful blooming cane is supposed to do because you will buy it. The fragrance is delicious. Usually all nobly hybrid smell of freesia is very fresh, very spring. It's just amazing. So you have your one guideline, the size of the cane that you saw full of blooms and you take it home. Know that this is not normal. The fact that that initial cane is ever so long and ever so tall is an indicator of what the orchid's potential is, but it is not an indicator of what is going to happen next until it does that for you again in a couple of years. So these orchids are under a tremendous amount of stress when they have already arrived in the garden centers. The timing of the blooming was such so that you would take it home. Just like complex Phalaenopsis hybrids, they have been pumped full of hormones in order to propagate the back canes that have been cut and grow them on to get that one single cane that is enormous and in bloom. Your orchid has had the perfect cocktail of light, fertilizer and hormones. You see, the market has caught on as to how quickly a Dendrobium nobili will propagate itself from cutting canes off, letting a new growth appear, and then growing that on. This orchid is no more than two or three years old when you receive it with that one long, gorgeous cane in bloom. It is actually much cheaper to cultivate and grow these orchids en masse than it is a complex Phalaenopsis hybrid, simply because every single cane, when you take it off the mother plant and cut into the cane and every single section is then potted up, every single section will produce a new growth. So you can imagine that a cane that is this long, if you're not going to be greedy, you can cut it into two and split it and you get two plants. Usually you'll get a third of the length of the cane in the back of a pot and that is then going to produce a new growth and then the third year that really long growth that you find in bloom is now in your possession. These are going to be much much more readily available to the market in the future than the complex Phalaenopsis hybrids because these 
However, fragrance, Phalaenopsis hybrids do not. And as the market gets tired of all the Phalaenopsis hybrids, they are beautiful, they bloom, but seeing as the consumer always wants something new, it's going to get a little bit tedious trying to sell complex Phalaenopsis hybrids that are not fragrant, when next to it there is an orchid that looks like this, that is exuding this magical freesia fragrance. Being that it is cultivated in an artificial environment to perfection, it will also bloom out of season. So if you're standing next to an orchid and think you're gonna take one home or give it as a gift, you will be hard pressed to pick the complex Phalaenopsis hybrid if next to it there's one like this, no matter the color, but it is fragrant. It is our natural instinct to go with something that is not only beautiful, but also provides a fragrance. So I'm just gonna put it out there that these will be much more readily available if that hasn't happened already in my area here in Southern Spain, I haven't seen it, than in future the complex Phalaenopsis hybrids because these are much, much cheaper to propagate and produce en masse and get them out of the facility and start a new batch. This whole thing about the propagation was necessary because it is a form of stress, not only just to be cutting canes and having a new growth growing, growing it on in perfect environments, you bringing your nobly hybrid home and then seeing a new growth starting and your expectations are that you are going to grow that new growth on to the same size as what you have bought it with. There's nothing wrong with such expectations, but there is something wrong when we don't achieve that in the first year and all of a sudden we are not getting blooms, but we are seeing keikis growing on our main cane or the growth itself remains puny. As with any orchid that you bring new into your collection, it needs to acclimate. It needs to get the hormones out of its system because you're not doing the same thing as what the mass producers are doing. You have your regular fertilizer, you have your light influences and temperature influences. So this cane that you're seeing grow in your first year with this orchid after it's finished blooming is only just going to perform to such a degree that now it is acclimating and trying to understand what it has to do with the conditions that it finds itself in. And more often than not, we get frustrated when we get them home because that new cane was supposed to give the same blooms that we bought it with. And then we have a stunted growth. And on top of that, possibly keiki is growing left, right and center. So that is where the despair comes in. You think you've done something wrong. You think your light levels aren't high enough. You think you haven't given it a dry winter rest. You also think that maybe you fertilized it too much or you fertilized it too little. And all of that is actually incorrect. You have probably done everything right by your orchid and all the orchid is doing is acclimating to your space. So that's year one. Year two, that cane may produce another growth or two growths because that's how vigorous these hybrids are. And now you're motivated and you get a second opportunity because now in year two, that orchid is going to bloom for you. And I will say 80% of the time, it will bloom for you if the basic culture needs are met. However, your growth is still stuck and you may still get one or two keikis appearing. Keikis are a form of stress. Keikis are the mechanism by which the orchid is fighting for survival. If under stress, an orchid like this will produce keikis because that will guarantee the survival of the orchid. Every keiki is a new plant. So on this orchid specifically, I had these super large canes. Let's get into what is going on and why it looks like this now, which I'm over the moon by, but I've been waiting for this moment since 2018 when she came into my collection. I didn't even have any blooms. She was a rescue orchid. And these were the canes that she came with, all the old ones there. So what happened in my first year is exactly what I mentioned to you earlier. My first year, I was expecting with all my fertilizer, it was going to grow to size. Well, it didn't. It produced a lot of keikis, on the older growths where nodes were still available. And when I say nodes were still available, where nodes were not blooming. It also produced a few growths that were very stunted and they're kind of buried in here now in the pot. But the first year's growth with me was nothing really to write home about. Once the roots of the keikis were long enough, I removed the keikis from the mother plant. There was five of them in total and I potted them up into the pot, giving me a bushier plant. Pretty much in that pot, there is about six orchids right now, the five keikis being separate plants. Year two, I had a few blooms all around the base. 
It looked as if a flower arrangement had been dumped into a garbage bin because these canes here had no leaves. Down here I had flowers and it was like somebody had turned a bunch of flowers into the garbage and those were the stalks. It looked pretty ridiculous, but never mind. Year three, now we had the opportunity to start growing some sizable growths. And that is how long it takes for a Dendrobium nobili to come unto its own after you receive it at home. Probably three years before you see a growth starting to develop to the length of the original cane. And that was this cane back here, right here. And these are the older canes. So I'm hoping you can see that. This cane was year three, and here we are year four. And now I have a growth that makes sense for my climate my growing conditions, what I can provide for this orchid, because if I'm trying to achieve this length cane, then I probably would be disappointed. I may never get to this size cane because my conditions aren't what it had when it grew this size cane. So just keep that in mind that your home conditions will never match the conditions of the nobly when it came to you with that single first cane. This is something that is pretty good that I can live with two-thirds of the original size cane and that is a good culture if I get anything more and stronger and longer out of this one in future years even better but that is a reasonable rational size comparison to know that the orchid is now in a sense of stable mode the hormones are out of its system keikis have not been produced for two years and now I've got blooming guaranteed and here are the growths for the coming season which is also something that right now I'm cultivating and I'm pushing 300 parts per million of fertilizer into, as I did in previous years, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the acclimating, to bring me to this conclusion that no matter what you do, how much you love on your Dendrobium nobly hybrid, it has to grow out of the hormones that it had pumped into it. It has to adapt and acclimate to your climate. And only after three years of possessing that orchid and growing Growing it, will it be capable of similar structures as with what you bought it? Just seeing here is another growth coming out. It's way more advanced than the ones down there. And this one, just by the looks of it and how big it is already compared to the other ones, this one could be an opportunity to grow it to that size but again if that were not to happen that is fine if I only reach this size that is fine if you're not reaching the maximum size of the canes that you bought your orchid with that is fine your conditions won't match how this nobly hybrid has been cultivated and that is from the angle of being maybe frustrated or the despair of thinking you're not getting it right now you may say, well, I got my Nobly Complex Hybrid and I've got a cane first year that absolutely matched the size, if not beyond the size that it came with and it bloomed and everything was great. And I'm going to say, well, then you are not the category of despair <laughs> and good for you. But I want to encourage those of you that have bought an orchid like this and are in despair and are doubting yourself as to are you doing something wrong? 80% of the time you're doing nothing wrong. You just need to wait it out. Let the orchid grow out of whatever is inside of her. Let her understand there is no more stress being imposed on her. Welcome the keikis, embrace the keikis pop the keikis up because you get more of that orchid and then with a little bit of patience after a three-year cycle your dendrobium nobly complex hybrid will look and resemble something that you were so infatuated with when you found her on the table and then you brought her home so i hope that this video was helpful that in actual fact if you are in the category of despair that you can now look at your Novoli hybrids and go okay I know what's going on embrace those keikis and know that in a couple of years she's going to make a complete turnaround and then she'll be a reliable bloomer with a gorgeous fragrance year after year after year and if you want to try it for yourself to propagate her cut back one of the older canes, lay it on some sphagnum moss, keep that sphagnum moss damp, and then watch her grow more keikis out of that cane, just like they do in these mass production facilities. You get yourself another nobly hybrid from the one you already have. 
Really appreciate you watching. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to elaborate. I will link care videos in the description. This video was to erase any despair. I hope it served its purpose as a point of encouragement and that you now know it's not you, it's the orchid. Have yourselves a very beautiful day. On one condition though, that you please stay safe and take care. Bye.